Hebrews and how we didn't want to ask him about that. But uh, he was going to get cornered out on here, but I'm not sure. We just want it. Good morning, family and friends. We will be begin our ceremony of celebrating the life, the legacy, and the love of Sister Edith Annie Mae Traham Sampson. Amen. Amen. Good morning, good morning. My name is Ramona Chapman. I am going to serve along with Reverend Johnny Harrison officiating today as we celebrate the life of a person that I've only called Aunt Edith. So I didn't even know she had these additional names. To me, she was just Aunt Edith, amen, amen. just as we just want to center ourselves as we get started. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, though she was dead, yet shall she live. And whosoever li liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Aunt Edith knew that her Redeemer liveth and that he stands at the latter day upon the earth. And though her physical presence will not be with her, with us, her spiritual and her immortal presence will always be with us because there is nothing that can destroy the spirit. And therefore, we have come to celebrate life. I am going to be reading the scriptures from the 23rd Psalm, Old Testament and New Testament scripture, scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 through 58. I will be followed by prayer with Reverend Eric Hugan, who is a family member and a son of New Hope Church. Amen. Followed then by a song of Sister Tina Lewis, then I shall return. The word of God found in the psalmist says this. The Lord is my shepherd. This is a familiar one. You can say this one with me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right path for his name's sake, in the path of righteousness. I know some King James saints out here. <laughs> Even though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. And yes, my cup runneth over. Surely, 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 goodness and mercy has followed Aunt Edith for 95 years. Surely, goodness and mercy has followed her all the days of her life. And now she will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Athelia, she'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Andrea, she'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Leslie, she'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Matthew, she'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lorenzo, she'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Frederick and Frieda, she shall dwell in the house of the Lord. 
forever and ever. Our New Testament scripture comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 through 58. What I am saying, and I know that we have family and friends that are joining, joining us here virtually today, so I do not want to forget them. I want to invite them into the presence and the service, the reverence of why we're here today, to celebrate a life that has been well lived. Amen. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. But this perishable body, this, this mortal body must put on imperishability. And this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory. This is the word of the Lord, and the word of the Lord is already blessed. Amen? Amen. Amen. We will now have Reverend Eric. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we first thank you for allowing us to be here today. We thank you, Father God, for waking us up this morning, and we thank you, Father God, for giving us health and strength. Father, we thank you for letting us be clothed in our right mind and allowing us to dress ourselves, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for bringing us from where we came from to this place to celebrate the life of this sweet, dear sister, Lord God. Father, I thank you just because of the fact of the impact that she has and has had on the lives of people here and some that have gone on home. Father, I thank you that when I think of her, Lord, I think of that beautiful smile. I think of how that smile allows us to know, Lord God, that she knows you and you are her Lord and her Savior. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that she no longer has to suffer. But, Father God, that she can dwell with you forever and forever. Now, Father, we pray that your peace and your spirit will be with the family that remains. Be with her daughters, Lord God. Allow the lessons that she's placed on the inside of them to keep them and to hold them, to allow them to know that the God that she serves is the same God they should serve. I pray for her grandchildren, Lord God, that they would know that grandma left a legacy. And that legacy, Father God, did not die on February, I'm sorry, on February 27th, but it lives on in the life and the decisions that they make. Let them make good decisions, Lord God. Let them make decisions that will make grandma proud. Grave when she went. But those prayers are still here. The kind words that she gave. The love that she demonstrated. I pray, Lord God, that we who are here today will know that one day we have to close our eyes. One day we have to put on stress and strife. One day we have to lay down our burdens, Father God, and stand before your great throne. One day we have to be judged for our sins. One day. We have to see you face to face. But, Father, on that day, 
We don't know the time. We don't know the hour. Nor do we know the place. But Father, on that day, I just want to hear you say, well done. Well done. Well done. You've been faithful over a few things. Now come on up higher and I'll make you ruler over many. Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you honor. And we give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen Amen. and amen. amen.
I will read the condolences first from the church of Family New Hope Baptist Church in Ann Arbor, Michigan. To the family of Mother Edith Sampson, there is an open gate at the end of the road through which each must go alone. And there in light we cannot see. Our father claims his own. Beyond the gate, your loved one finds happiness and rest, and there no comfort in the thought that a loving God knows best. We, the pastor and members of the New Hope Baptist Church of Ann Arbor, Michigan, would like to express our heartfelt sympathy to your family. We know your hearts are heavy, but we especially want Athelia and Lorenzo Brown, Andrea Haygood and family, who are dedicated and faithful members of our church family to know this, that God will wipe away all tears, and we stand with you at this sorrowful time. A sweet petal has fallen off the limbs of the rose bush here on earth, but we know it has attached itself with the other petals that have gone before her and are welcoming her to that beautiful garden in heaven. Whereas God in his infinite wisdom and power never makes mistakes, please find comfort in the fact that she is resting in the arms of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, Casting all your care upon him, for, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you, is true, because earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And whereas it is difficult to see beyond today, know that Mother Samson has gone the way we all must go. But we shall rise from the dead to everlasting life if we are faithful unto the death in the cause of Christ. May the memories you have of her ease your pain of sorrow, and may the care, love, and prayers of the saints give you strength. Also, may the peace of God that passes through all understanding guide your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to know that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 31. Humbly submitted this sixth day of March in the year of our Lord, 2021, Reverend Roderick K. Green, pastor. Our condolences. He has borne our grief and carried our sorrows. We, the members of the Progressive Church, Progressive Choir of New Hope Baptist Church of Ann Arbor, Michigan, would like to express our heartfelt sympathy to the family of Mother Edith Sampson. We are sorry to hear of the passing of your mother, and we want Athelia Brown, who is our choir's president, to know that you and your family are in our thoughts and prayers. Think on this thought. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. We stand with you with love and support. Therefore, even as you mourn your mother, we resign to all wise Heavenly Father's will to know that he knows how much we can bear. Mother Samson has gone the way that we all must go. There are three steps to heaven, out of self, into Christ, and into glory. That is where your mother is, in the arms of our Heavenly Father in glory. God has not left your side. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. We love you, the Progressive Choir. And to the family of Mother Edith Sampson, we the Missionary Society of New Hope Baptist Church of Ann Arbor would like to express our sympathy to Ophelia, Lorenzo, and Andrea. Our thoughts and love are with you today and days to come. We all know that God makes no mistakes, but even knowing this, losing a loved one hurts, especially a mother. Please know that God feels your hurt and pain and is always with you during your loneliest time. Hold on to his unchanging hand. We pray God will bless you today and always. Sisterly, Sister Sue Jenkins, president of the Missionary Society, New Hope Baptist Church. And I will read three cards. With our sympathy, it is so sad to think you've lost someone so special, and though we cannot know all you're going through, we want to tell you that we care and hope that loving memories of all you shared will help to comfort you. It was a blessing to have taken care of your mother, Edith Sampson. God bless Dr. Lisa Hairston Ledoux and staff. As some people journey through life, they leave footprints of kindness and love courage and compassion, joy and faith. 
Even when they're gone, the trail they've left behind continues to inspire us. Praying God will comfort and care for you while you celebrate the legacy that lives on with sympathy. With love and prayers, Alonzo and Yvonne. And finally, in deepest sympathy, it seems there's very little anyone can say or do to ease the loss of someone who meant so very much to you. But may you find some comfort in the sorrow that you bear, just knowing that there are many hearts that understand and care. Love, the Third Sunday Family. And now I will read the obituary. Edith Annie May Tranham Sampson entered into time on September 12, 1925, in New Boston, Virginia, to Joseph Lemuel and Mary Sally Botts Tranham. She was the youngest, the, she was the second youngest of five girls born to this loving union and Christian home. She grew up in a time of segregation, but the love of family and God provided her with a firm foundation that she would stand on her entire life. Edith's family relocated to Baltimore, Maryland when she was an infant. It is here that she was nurtured and excelled academically in the Baltimore public school system. After Edith's graduation from Frederick Douglass High School, she became a cadet in the United States Navy Nurse Corps. Despite intense racial discrimination, she graduated from the Nurse Corps and began her nursing career at Freedman's Hospital in their program. Freedman would later become Howard University Hospital. In addition to her excelling academically, she was also quite a competitive athlete. She was a member of the college swim team as well as an avid tennis player. Edith's early nursing career at Freedman's would provide her historical professional moments as she witnessed innovations among many African-American physicians. She would be blessed to work with renowned physicians such as Dr. Charles Drew, separation of blood plasma, and Dr. Robert Jarvik, inventor of the artificial heart. Most of her professional career was in the operating room, but in her later years, she specialized in orthopedic surgery. Edith had a stellar career where she was loved, honored, and well-respected, a well-respected registered nurse for 52 years. <laughs> On June 17, 1951, Edith married her soulmate, a. Paul Sampson. To this union, they were blessed with two wonderful daughters, Ethelia Merva and Andrea Paula. They instilled the love of God, love of family, and the thirst for academic excellence in both of them. Her heart was expanded with more joy with the love of her two lovely grandchildren, Leslie Amira Haygood and Matthew Amir Haygood. She and A. Paul enjoyed 47 years of marriage before he preceded her in death. The life that Edith entrusted to Christ at an early age was evident in her sweet spirit, her giving heart, and her quick wit. She lived a life of service to family, medicine, and to her God. She and her family were active members of Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church, pastored by her brother-in-law, Reverend Dr. Frederick G. Sampson II. Upon her retirement, she participated in Tai Chi classes and volunteered in the church's Meals on Wheels program. Her athletic abilities were strong and well into her 80s, she was in great physical shape. Her famous quote was, she raked leaves in the spring to get in shape for shoveling the snow in the winter. <laughs> Edith leaves to cherish her memories and continue her legacy. Two daughters, Ethelia Merva Sampson Brown Lorenzo and Andrea Paula Sampson Haygood, Patrick deceased. Two grandchildren, Leslie and Matthew, nephews, nieces, and a host of relatives and friends, and a special Third Sunday family. Amen, amen. Okay, now we can give the God a hand clap of praise for that, that, that type of life. Amen, amen, amen. We will now have a selection by Brother James Moore, afterwards, uh, the family will have an opportunity to share their final viewing, and then we will have the eulogy by the Reverend Johnny Harrison, pastor of the Inkster Spring Hill Missionary Baptist Church.
Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And then I saw a city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of the heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And then I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals, and he will deliver them. They will be all of his people and he himself will be with them and he will be their God and he shall wipe every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more mourning and crying and pain shall be no more. For the first things have passed away, and the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this down. For these words, Athelia, for these words, Andrea, for these words, Leslie, for these words, Matthew. It is done. Trust me. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and I am the end. I shall wipe all tears away. And what then shall we say to these things? That if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not be with you in this moment, Athelia? Will he not be with you in this moment, Andrea? Will he not be with you in this moment, Leslie? Will he not be with you in this moment, Matthew? Will he not be with you in this moment, Lorenzo? Will he not be with you in this moment, Reverend Frederick, Frida? Will he not be with you? For it is Christ who says that we are more than conquerors through him that has loved us. For I am persuaded that on this day that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor present things nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation, do you believe that family, shall be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from the love of the Christ Jesus. Nothing can separate us from the love of Aunt Edith. Nothing can separate us from the love of our God. And for that, on this day, 
on every day, we can still give God praise for a life of 95 years. 95 years of love. 95 years of memories. 95 years of smiles. 95 years of embracing. Hugs, things that we can't do right now. 95 years of her loving. 95 years of her serving. And now she reigns immortal with our God. We can give God thanks and praise for that. She is a testimony that God will be with us. That God will walk with us. That God will keep us in all that we do. And for this, we know that nothing shall ever separate us from the love of Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal and wise God, we are so ever thankful. Thankful, God, for the new mercies you give us each and every day. And we're thankful for God that you allowed us to come together to celebrate the home going of Sister Eda. God, you have been so good. You have kept us. You've been with us and you've never forsaken us. So does my prayer, Father God. Now that the family may rest on the faith and the God she knew. May they embrace the God that she loved. Be with them, Father God. And it's my prayer now, Father God, that you would just use me for a few moments to speak words of comfort to the family. Bless my words and make them thine. We be forever to give you the glory. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 What a glorious occasion. Amen. 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 Now, now look at here. Look at here. This is a homegoing celebration. And we ought to be excited in the Lord. Because any time you can celebrate 95 years, that's a cause to shout, that's a cause to tap dance, that's a cause to twirl, run up and down the aisle, because truly God has been good. Amen, amen. I just think I got to get excited all by my, if you won't get excited, I'll get excited for you. Because when you think about family, when you think about the times in which we live, and what's going on today with the COVID and all these other things that's taking place in our world, God has blessed us with an eat of saints yes, yes. that have lived 95 years. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to his yes. name. Amen. Yes. So I don't know. I'm just going to be excited through this whole yes. celebration. <laughs> you may not know how to loosen up, but I'm just going to be excited for you. Amen. Amen. And so I'm just so thankful. I'm honored to be here. Because I know that you have could, have could have asked a number of preachers. And I'm praying for uh, Frederick. Oh, yeah. Yes, I'm praying for Seth Frederick, the nephew. Yes. He could have been here. I know he, he, he desired to be here. Lord. But I pray and lift him up. Yes, but I'm also thankful for the virtual family. Yes, those who desired to be here, but they couldn't. Mm -hmm. And then there's the third Sunday family. Glory be to yes, his name. Yes, Amen. Yes. Amen. We are family, yes. and thank God for the support and the love that has been poured out and shared because there's nothing like family support and being able to come together, that tie that binds the hearts together. Yes. Yes. And so I say thank you, family. Mm -hmm. And so there's a word from God. Mm -hmm. 
And so we have a reason to come celebrate today, to celebrate and talk about Sister Edith Annie May Traham Sampson. I'm like you, Sister Ramona. <laughs> All I ever known was I'd either. Amen, amen. And even though we come to celebrate and she's worthy of conversation, but the reason we come to this place is to bless the Lord amen. who gave her life and took her life back unto himself and gave her to us as a witness of his grace. So today we have reason to celebrate because God is worthy to be praised. In spite of the sickness, in spite of the setbacks, in spite of challenges these past several months, God has been good through it all. And so now we come into this place to celebrate and to share the celebration of the one who has made a difference in the lives of so many. And so, Matthew, I'm praying for you. And I say to you and the grandchildren, cherish all that she poured into you. Cherish the love that she shared with you and the words. Because one thing death cannot do is erase memories. So you embrace the memories that you had with your grandmother. And so we thank God. For Sister Samson, we thank God for her strong confidence in a great God who carried her through life and even in her illness. But today, how do we celebrate the passing of a loved one? There's a word from a familiar passage of scripture found in the book of Revelation. Chapter 14, verse 13, and it says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Yeah. Ephelia, Andrea, family and friends, we have much to celebrate. And I've already said it because we are happy of the 95 years which she lived. And if you can't get happy about that, the Bible says the years of our life are but seven. Or even by reason of strength, 80. 80. 95. 80. 80. 95. You're going to get it in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 80. Yeah. 95. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's cause to celebrate today. And so the text says, blessed. Well, what does the word blessed mean? It means to be happy, fortunate, well off. Well, where Mrs. Sampson is right now, she's happy, she's fortunate, and she's well off. Well, how can... She how can she be happy and fortunate and well off? How can they that uh, who believe are, and are dead, how can they be well off? Well, she's more blessed than anybody today before me. She's more blessed than those who's watching virtual. She's more blessed than those who are present. Why is she more blessed? Well, think about it. When we think about death, death we think is something horrible. Death is the great unknown. But the word says, I heard a voice from heaven say, blessed are the dead. She's blessed because she's died in the Lord. Amen. And so I'm sure she's happy right now because we We've, we've sang songs, and, and we think about glory. We think about heaven. I think she, she's happy because she can see the wonders of heaven, and, and she probably can see the street paved with golds and maybe the walls of jasper. But guess what? She's happy because now she can see the one she's loved. She can see the one she's worshipped face to face. And so I'm truly happy yeah, yeah. that in the presence of God Almighty, 
There she can worship him. There she can bow down before him. There she can even hear his voice speak to her saying, well done. Well done. And so I'm excited about it because we know that the hymn writer penned these words. Not just to sit with the angels, nor to see the loved ones gone on, nor to drink from the fountain under the great white throne, nor for the crown that he giveth, and I'm trying, because she ran a race. 95 years, she's ran a race. Not for the crown that he giveth, and I'm trying to run this race. But all I want, all you want, all everybody want up in heaven is just to behold his face. So the Bible says death is a blessing only to those who have confessed Christ as their Savior and those who have remained faithful. So we do not grieve as those who have no hope because we know when Christ shall come, the dead in Christ shall rise first and those who remain shall be caught up to meet him together in the air. What a glorious day that will be when Christ descends from the heaven and with a shout. The dead in Christ will rise, and we who remain shall be caught up to see him. That's a glorious day. And so Mrs. Sampson is blessed because she has died in the Lord. Well, what happens when you die in the Lord? The word says, and they will rest from their labor. The word rest means to be refreshed, to end from toils and trials of life, to be relief. And we think about Sister Samson, born in 1925. Think about those times, what was going on then. And so as she grew up, Sister Samson, with that smile, she learned to be kind in a selfish world. She was caring in an uncaring world. She was determined when most people don't know how to hold on she, she was determined because in spite of racism and all those things was going on, she pressed forward. Yeah. Yeah. She was strong in a weak world. And the feel you shared with me at the age, tender age of 18 years old, she began working at Freeman Hospital, known now as Howard University Hospital, where she provided care for the age and the disabled black patients. And many of you may not know that Freeman Hospital was the first of its kind to give medical treatment to former slaves. Yeah, yeah. It took a special kind of woman at a young age to endure bigotry and racism in during those times because at the age of 18, in 1943, there was a race riot going on in Detroit. There was a race riot going on in New York. And so in the midst of all of that, she had to maintain her dignity and who she was, stand up for what she believed, and press forward. She was some kind of woman. So in the midst of all that she experienced, what held her together? I'm here to tell you there was a divine connection. Amen. So here we are today, and we think about her. And many of us today, we may be struggling with our faith, we may be struggling to help those who don't know Jesus Christ. We may be struggling to witness to others. But let me tell you today, just like Sister Eva, when you think about God and all that he's done for you and where he's brought you from and how he's walked with you and never forsaken you and never have left you, my Lord. What does it take to share the love of God and tell a dying world that what you need today is a God that Sister, Sister uh, Samson knew and that you share that God with the people who are in the midst of struggling today? What better time yeah, yeah. to share to the world now who is struggling with their faith and struggling with the times in which we live is tell them about a God. He still reigns. He still rules. He still sits high on his throne yes, he because we're so thankful. Because of the God she served. Well, I'm here to tell you, she loved God. You said she had a strong faith. How can I know that the God she loved is with me? Well, I'm here to tell you. 
if you choose to walk with God, knowing that in the beauty of his holiness, God is willing to walk with you. Well, how can I be certain that God is with me? Well, he's with me in the midst of trials. He's with me in the midst of sickness. He's with me even in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death. And if I don't give up my faith, and if I don't throw in the towel, if I just believe no matter what may come, that God is still worthy, and God can still be worshipped, and God can still be trusted, so, family, I'm here to tell you, just hold on to your God because God is always willing to hold on to you. So I'm here to tell you she's at rest. She's at rest. You don't have to worry about how she feels right now. She's at rest. And her deeds will follow her. Now, I've heard many people say all the things that she's done, those things will follow her. Well, how can her works follow her? Well, right now, while you are still alive and you are creating your legacy and the decisions you make, the examples you set, the deeds you do, the faith you live, the lives you touch, when you think about it, 50 years, 52 years of nursing, think about the empathy she showed, the compassion that she had, many demands of long hours, sharing her faith, maybe holding someone's hand, Speaking a encouraging word, those deeds follow her. Because even for 52 years, she had lived the life of a servant, given her time and her talent. And she learned that if you learn to allow the God Almighty to deposit something in you, she couldn't help but share it and be an extension of eternal arms. And so I thank God for her life. I thank God for what she's done. Because I can imagine she would, this was her mindset, as the songs say, if I can just help somebody as I travel along. If I can help somebody with a word of song, if I can help somebody from doing wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. Well, the question becomes, how do you spend your time and energy? What are you doing? Aren't you glad that the obituary is not the final record? Aren't you glad that the obituary is not the final record of Sister Edith Sampson? God does not forget anything that was done in his name. She is now getting recognition from God for all that she has done. Because the Bible says your works will follow them. The deeds you do for the Lord while you in this life, they are going to outlive you. And those deeds you are now doing, they will have an impact on the lives today and the years to come. So saints of God, as you walk in her footsteps and as you pattern the type of life she lived and the deeds that she did, the deeds of compassion, the deeds of kindness, the deeds of love, the deeds of generosity, the deeds of encouragement, your words of faith, I'm here to tell you, you don't have to be great to leave a great legacy. Just let the life of Christ live through you. And you notice that the promise is only for those who die in the Lord. You can be a non-believer and accomplish great things and leave a legacy on earth, but only the people who have given their life to Jesus Christ, their deeds will live throughout all eternity. And while we was coming into the uh, 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 funeral home, Myself and Lorenzo was walking down the sidewalk. Lorenzo, you can't tell preaching nothing. And we was walking down the sidewalk. <laughs> and, and he said, he shared with me, he said, I was telling my wife, we don't have nothing to be feel bad about. Because mama, our mothers deposited God in us. Yeah, yeah. And he said, with that, yeah, yeah. I'm all right. Mama, yeah. 
He said, she deposited, they deposited. He said, I can make it. He said, I'm all right because I got everything I need because the God that she loved, the God that she served, they deposited in me. And so with that, everything is all right. And so I'm here to tell you, I started to say, well, you are the church. I'm here to tell you, church. The only thing you will take to heaven is your good deeds. Every act of forgiveness, every act of service you did for him, God is going to re remember those deeds you have done, and he's going to give you a hearty, well done. And even though man down here don't recognize you and he don't say thank you, he don't appreciate you, God has seen all your deeds. And with that, he would say, well done. well done. So I'm here to tell you, she's at rest. She's at rest. How do you know she is getting recognition from God, all that she has done? The text says, yes, says the spirit. The word of God is truth. And what God says is truth. So God himself, says she is blessed. God himself says she is resting from her labor. So know that God said everything is all right. And so I close. I close. A familiar story. You've heard it. I remember some time ago, and I experienced this personally myself, I was on my way to take a flight to Chicago, not Chicago, Vegas. And while getting ready to board the flight, there was a lady, and I assume it was the child's mother, was walking the child down the ramp. And with that, tears were bathing her face. And she was crying because her child was about to board the plane, and she could not be with her. And so as we got onto the plane, and we were taxing away. You could see the mother from a distance, just tears bathing her face. Because she was trying to adjust the fact of knowing that her child was leaving her. But when we arrived in Vegas, there was another crowd. And it appeared to be the grandparents. And when the child stepped off that plane, they had this big smile on their face. They were smiling. They had extended arms because they were happy to see the child. Now, I can understand the mama leaving the child, the ch being separated from the child. I can understand her pain and what she was being. But on the other side, yes, yes. where there was the arrival, there was another crowd my God, my God. that was waiting and happy to see. All I'm trying to tell you today, mm -hmm. cry, yes, you may. Yes, you may shed tears and miss mama, but there's another crowd on the side of glory. And they saying, welcome home. Sister, you have labored in the vineyard. Welcome home. Yes, welcome home. Welcome home. So what are you doing in the meantime? We're going to praise God. We're going to thank him for his grace. We're going to praise God. We're going to thank her for her life. We're going to praise God and thank her for her legacy. We're going to praise God for what she's poured into you. We're going to praise God yes, and give yes. him all the glory. Yes, God. Yes, God. Welcome home. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. At this time, uh, Pastor uh, Roger Green, would you come forth? Mother Samson, yes. beautiful lady, yes. beautiful lady, beautiful lady, a woman of grace, Mama. a woman of compassion, a woman of love. It was a joy to know her. She was a frequent 
visitor to our church and every time she walked in the door. I was glad to see her. <laughs> Amen. 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 We know that this body does not contain her soul. Yes, yes. Because the Bible says she's absent from the body. Mm. She's That's present with the Lord. Mm. That's the Bible. Amen. 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 So Amen. She's with the Lord right now. So we're going to commit the body. Ashes to ashes. just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for Mother Sam. Yes. Oh, such a beautiful mom. Such a beautiful mom. We thank you, Lord, for the way she touched our lives. We thank you for her children. Yes, yes. God. yes. She raised her children mm -hmm. to know Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. yes. She raised her grandchildren mm -hmm. to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes, God. Because she knew Jesus. Had a, leap, a deep and loving relationship with our Savior. And so we know that she's with you now, Lord. No more suffering. No more pain. No more burdens. No more troubles of this world. But she's safe in the arms of Jesus. We say thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We thank you for the words of encouragement from Pastor Harrison yes. and all that have gave expressions of kindness and we thank you, Father, for this service. Most of all, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for the love that she shared and the lessons she taught. She showed us how to be a great woman of God. Mm -hmm. She lived it, Father God. Yes. Yes. She yes. talked it. She worked it. Her labors do show forth her reward. And now she's wearing a crown, Heavenly Father. Bless her now, Father. Bless us all. Help us to live the kind of life that when it's our time to cross the chilly waters of Jordan, that we'll be able to see her over there and say, love you, Mother Samson. Good to see you. Bless us now, Father, and keep us in your care. And it's all in Christ Jesus' name. Let us all say, amen. amen. Thank you to the Samson family for entrusting your loved one into the Swanson Funeral Home. On behalf of the Swanson family and staff, we do treat, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for entrusting Mother Samson into our care. This concludes the service here at the Swanson Funeral Home. God bless you and God keep you is my prayer to you.